my first video in the new house. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, that might mean nothing to you. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good. I kind of just slap stuff up to have stuff there so I could start making YouTube videos again since I have a mortgage to pay now and I couldn't wait any longer and oh my god. So uh, <laughs> I wondered what should be the first video I officially make in the new house? And the answer was very obvious. Of course, a video about the Switch, but not only the Switch, it's a video that a lot of people have been asking me to do recently. Another episode in my eShop videos, meaning I had to go and buy and play another 10 eShop, more than that, because a lot of duds don't make it through. I had to sift through the crap on the eShop that none of you want to do. None of you want this responsibility. That's why you're begging me to do it. You don't want to go and buy. So needless to say, all 10 of these are absolute bangers. It's a very nice mix of games too. I feel very confident that no matter whatever video gamer weirdo freak you might be, there will be something on this list for you to enjoy. And if there's not, you're just being picky. You, you probably only play like Call of Duty and Maddens and if that's the case, hey, I appreciate you watching me, but why are you here? <laughs> With all that said, subscribe before you leave now that I upset you and like the video and we'll get started. I'm very excited to do this in the new house. Thanks for watching. Let's go. Okay, but first, you know how me buying all of these games to review is pretty expensive? Yes. No, no, not you. Of course you know. Oh, you're trying to segue into a sponsor skit, aren't you? Yes. Sorry, go on, go on. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare! Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes on topics including, but in no way limited to, illustration, design, photography, video editing, and much more. Whether you want to learn how to become a YouTuber or just do some fun art as a hobby, everything on Skillshare. You know, we ain't wrong. In the past, I've taken Japanese, guitar lessons, even Adobe After Effects courses. But whether you're looking to get better at cooking at home, which is a good idea right now, or learning how to sketch ink and color, there's literally a course for everything. Maybe not literally everything. I'm sure if you look for something weird, it might not be there. But you know what? Skillshare is literally super affordable with an annual subscription costing less than $10 a month. Hey! And for a very limited time, Skillshare is offering our viewers, I guess, a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership just by clicking the link in my description. Yeah, so how about you get off your butt and learn something already? Or better yet, stay sitting. I mean, <laughs> it's all online anyway. All right, on with your video, you idiot. A short hike is just that. You hike, climb, and soar your way up the peaceful mountain landscapes of Hawk Peak Park. The beautiful autumn aesthetics are so crisp. The yellows, the oranges, the browns, they all leap straight off my switch screen and land me smack bang in the middle of a Starbucks, buying my 15th pumpkin spice latte this season already. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. We're gonna get started for you. Hi, can I get me one of them pumpkin cream uh, cold brews in the largest size you have? Have, please. Okay, I can do the Vinci pumpkin cream cold brew, or I can do a Trenta actually. That might be too big. How big is that? 30 ounces. That sounds like a lot. Let's stick with the Venti. Okay, I'm basic, but I'm not 32 ounce basic. That's a lot of coffee. I should have got it. had too many of those. This game soothed my soul. From the visuals that initially had a 3DS reminiscent look but grew on me quite quickly, to the lush original soundtrack that progresses dynamically as you explore the mountain, but also the gameplay. You can explore the island any way you like, choosing your own path as you go. You'll meet other hikers, each with their own stories and great dialogue, find hidden treasures like feather upgrades allowing you to fly or climb higher than before. Yeah, and don't expect any heart racing, blood pumping, action packed gameplay here either. This is a game that promises a moment of peace in a world drenched with chaos. It's simply a short story about a bird's hike up a tree trail that has no cell phone reception. So for only $6.99, put away your own damn cell phone for a couple of hours and just enjoy the tranquility that is a short hike. Da -da -da -ba -da -ba. Next. Oh.
wait, did I say tranquility? Yeah, never mind. Screw that. Throw it out the window. It's time to get loud. Double Kick Heroes is a loud, unapologetically obnoxious kick ass. All right, turn it down. I can't keep yelling. Rhythmic shoot em up. Where you must survive the Mad Max style highway to hell full of zombies, battle tanks, and giant undead chickens, or whatever else the game decides to throw at you. And this game deserves a lot more love. For the soundtrack alone, I mean, this game gave me Tony Hawk 2 vibes of 10 year old me having something musically awakened inside as I discovered new artists and awesome tracks just by playing a really fun game. Each level of the game is set to one of 30 new tremendously awesome metal songs as you smash buttons on your controller in time with the face melting tracks to slay the undead creatures sprinting after you. The game begins easy enough as I played with one line of beats. You'll probably still see me in the top 10 worldwide scoreboard for most of the easy difficulty. As soon as I stepped it up to having two lines of tracks, a sniping button using the trigger, and another button for throwing grenades, <sighs> That was when practice made perfect. And I found myself buried in waves of rotting flesh. So if you're looking to just rock out to some tracks, you can always just play casually. But I love how many difficulty options there are. And speaking of options, you have a bunch of different modes like arcade, story, and even daily challenges. And if you've completely lost your marbles, you can try using the Joy-Con motion controls. I gotta imagine that's impossible. Sadly, it wouldn't let me use my drum though. It wouldn't recognize. Oh well. Spirit Pharaoh is a cozy, wonderful little game that deals with DEATH! But you know, like in a fun way. You play as Stella, which coincidentally is also the name of a delicious Belgian beer, but that's off subject. <laughs> I don't drink, but it's delicious. Stella is a fairy master to the deceased who, with your aid, befriends and cares for spirits before releasing them into the afterlife. You do this by helping the spirits with whatever they need to accept their fate and just move on already. There are many different requests given from these spirits that will have you farm and mine, fish, harvest, cook, and even craft your way across the mythical seas. Featuring gorgeously hand-drawn and animated characters, Spirit Fairer is a management sim that as you play will have you building things like kitchens to cook your food, farms, and even little guest homes for the spirits to temporarily live in. There is plenty more you will create upon your ship and even more you can find and discover by sailing to other islands and exploring the world around you. But what this game does best is deal with its underlying themes of death and acceptance in a way unlike any other game has even attempted to before. The story and dialogue is brilliantly written with believable characters and moments that will have you questioning your own real life purpose on this planet. I grew attached to so many of my spirit guests and new friends and then right as I felt like I had finally gotten to know them it was time for me to help them move on and they were gone. In a beautiful way, by helping these spirits accept their own mortality, the game in turn teaches you the acceptance of death itself. I get chills. I got chills when I wrote that and I got chills when I said that. And if you weren't sold on the game already, you can play co-op with a buddy and your buddy gets to play as the cat. So yeah, buy it. <laughs> Ah, oh, where are you from, mate? Ah, oh, I'm from Down Under. Oh, really? I'm going Down Under. Yeah, sometimes I just get bored, you know. Oh, the next game. Whatever. Going Under is full of vibrant color and energetic action. Having you play as an unpaid intern at a startup company. Now, on a normal day, that sounds pretty boring. Who wants to play that game, right? Until you find out that your job is going into the dungeons underneath the building, which are filled with other failed startups from previous years, and all the employees were left down there to collectively lose their minds and go barbaric. I feel like that breaks some HR rules, <laughs> but... Who am I to judge? They made a fun game out of it. As you progress through the defunct businesses, you'll find failed dating sites, gig workers, or cryptocurrencies. And of course, horrible bosses. Literally, at the end of each world, you find a horrible boss. And you know, it's a workplace game, so bosses and bosses, I, never mind. You slide down into the bottom floor and find an office-themed dungeon waiting for you. Which to me, working in a cubicle always felt like a dungeon sentence. So, not too far from the truth here. <laughs> you know, until the previous workers try to cave your head 
in with office supplies. I mean, that's a little different to my experience working in Optus Mobile. This is where your roguelite adventure begins. And the best part is almost everything you find in these rooms can be used as a weapon. From laptops to brooms and even body pillows. You can find actual weapons too, but I'd rather smack someone over their head with a keyboard. Like wanted style. Yeah, that's great, bro. Who's the man? That was Chris Pratt. I didn't realize till I looked it up for this video. Not only the better you will get at learning enemy attack patterns, but the more permanent upgrades and skills you can unlock to make the next go round more likely to be the one you don't die on. My first experience with A Long Dark was earlier this year on Xbox Game Pass. It's a clever exploration survival game that managed to wedge its intro song so far into my brain that now months later I still find myself humming it to this day. It's a very catchy song. Many survival games I've played in the past kind of just take you and dunk you in the middle of nowhere and then go, yep, that's it. Try not to die. Good luck. With little to no story going along with it. But The Long Dark features a full episodic tale and freaking weirdo characters for you to meet. You agree to fly someone somewhere. I'm not ruining the story. And then you immediately crash. Okay, I'll ruin some of it. In the middle of butthead Canadian who knows where nowhere. You wake up in the freezing cold and find out that your friend's missing. You end up finding a somewhat abandoned and completely forgotten about town out here and you face many challenges you can decide on yourself and those choices aren't always easy to make. Like trying to decide if you want burgers or wings for dinner. <laughs> Sorry, when I was writing this script it was almost 7 p.m. and I was really hungry. <clears throat> I don't know why I wrote all that into the script. All right, when it comes to surviving there is literally no tutorial. So you'll find yourself dying often early on as you try to figure it out and while that might be a little frustrating video game wise, in reality that would be life. Which is the effect the game developers were going for. You begin to learn how to build fires, collect and clean water, hunt and cook meat, and more. You need to keep an eye on your thirst, hunger, and body temperature. Oh, I'm thinking about it, I'm getting thirsty. There are many survival mechanics to discover and even more you might miss if you don't think about trying them out in your playthrough. The Long Dark is brutal, unforgiving, challenging, and not for the faint of heart. This is a fully fleshed out survival game. It's fair in its mechanics, but if you don't learn to survive, you won't. Also, side note, I recommend playing this on Xbox Game Pass because it's free and it looks gorgeous. Kinda got squished down to the Switch version and doesn't look as good. Moving on. <sighs> Ah, well, speaking of survival games, let's take a look at another. Windbound. This one is a little, a little, a lot easier to not die in than the last one. That said, I, I still died. Oh no. Live in front of everyone on Twitch. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know that I stream on Twitch, I do three times a week. We're having a blast over there. Please go follow me. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're thinking, oh, I didn't know you streamed on Twitch. That's great. I'll go follow you, Wood. It's just a shame that I missed that Windbound stream. <laughs> I feel ya. That's why I also uploaded it on my gameplay channel. I hacked it up and I made an edited video out of it. You can watch it right now. Link's below. Go subscribe to that channel too. All right, let me get back to the game and stop shouting myself out everywhere. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter, by the way. I I'm so close to 100,000 followers and I want that check mark. Okay, all right. I'm not gonna mention my second channel, Wood Hawker, where I make full videos about my life. Why would I mention that? I was initially drawn to Windbound as the sailing visuals and the name gave me Wind Waker vibes. But in practice, there was nothing like my beloved Zelda title and that's okay. In Windbound, you find yourself washed up on an uncharted island shore. As you gather some supplies from the surrounding islands, you fashion yourself a small boat and begin to adapt, explore, and navigate the perilous seas to stay alive. This is a crafting, hunting, survival adventure you go at alone. There are no other characters or NPCs around the world for you to meet. It's a journey of self-discovery, as well as unlocking the secrets of the islands around you and sailing. A lot of sailing. As you scavenge the land, you can craft new tools, weapons, and eventually even bags, which help expand your inventory space, which I can't recommend enough. The boat is a really cool mechanic in the game. You can modify it in so many different ways, adding extensions and room for all your gear. The story is told over several hours across chapters, but the game does feature permadeath. So if you cock it before the final chapter, you'll get sent hurtling all the way back to the start, losing everything other than what was in your hand at the time. Which, yeah, 
totally sucks. But you can build a fire on your boat and sail around cooking food and leather for crafting and it's such a freaking in-game life hack. I can't recommend it enough. How does it make sense to craft a small boat out of dead leaves and twigs and then, you know, set a fire on it? I don't know, but do it. Inmost is a dark tale told from the viewpoint of three playable main characters, each with their own unique gameplay styles and stories that intertwine throughout this whole hauntingly beautiful pixel art world. For me, what I immediately appreciated was the audio design. It's incredible. For example, in the very first area, when you open this grate to sneak through and it falls from the wall. <laughs> It's sudden, heavy, and weighted. Added with that quick flash of light and the shadows of a husband and wife reaching out to you as if begging you not to leave. Needless to say, the tone for the game was set right here and I was invested. While playing as the knight, you can attack and grapple. The little girl can move objects around to help her platform and the man is all about puzzle platforming and it's with him that you'll spend most of the game. I really enjoyed the puzzle mechanics and impressive storytelling telling through its striking visuals and audio design. I don't have much else to say. If you like what you see here, go get it. Oh, hello games. <laughs> Good to see ya. Sorry, that was a terrible joke. Uh, let me tell you a short story about a little game developer who I feel very sorry for on a daily basis. <laughs> Hello Games, founded in 2008, made a cutesy little biking game that did pretty well considering. So, for their next game, this four-person team decided to take a stab at creating a game set in a procedurally generated universe. The idea was that it would have over 18 quintillion planets being generated for the player. This game was going to be called No Man's Sky. And once the media heard about the concept, they blew it out of proportion, as the media tends to do with most things, and set expectations way too high for the very small indie developers. Developer. Then, after Hello Games went through a flood in their office and having to recover most of the project's code, PlayStation went and obtained the rights to the game, putting even more pressure on the four people making it. Needless to say, you know the story from there. And even though Hello Games did a fantastic job post-release at delivering what was originally promised, No Man's Sky was still a Herculean task for them to complete. Thankfully, after all that mess, Hello Games went to work creating an adorably charming, realistic for three people, wonderful game known as The Last Campfire. I told you that story before I showed you the game because I believe Hello Games deserves a level of appreciation they aren't often shown. And just maybe now you'll consider giving The Last Campfire a chance now that you know its story. The Last Campfire is a puzzle adventure game where you take control of a lost soul named Ember. It's your task to to help fellow forlorn souls who have lost hope to find their own purpose. Each lost soul will share its memory with you, creating a puzzle for you to solve. I found these puzzles really fun and the mechanics shift between each one so they all felt unique. The world itself has a fair share of puzzles for you to solve as you progress, meeting interesting and sometimes adorable new characters, and other times not as adorable. But something that is consistent is the outstanding soundtrack, marvelous lighting, and the solid 60 FPS, it's a very charming game and I really recommend you check it out. Next game's pretty normal, nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, it's just a little thing called Fight Crab, where you fight as crabs. It's a Fight Crab. <laughs> Okay, bear with me here. Fight Crab is what would happen if every anime ever had a baby with Long John Silvers. It's an over-the-top, physics-based battle game that combines giant crustaceans with insane weapons like swords and rockets in claw-to-claw -claw combat. And you can even ride a seal into battle and it's dumb and it's stupid. And Kim and I laughed our freaking asses off when we played it together. <laughs> Look, it's not good, but that's kind of the point. You can be a lobster wielding whatever Whatever weapons you want, fighting and trying to flip over the other sea creatures for a three-peat count, you're out! Okay, yeah, it's honestly so stupid. But I mean, it's pretty fleshed out. It has a campaign mode with 34 different stages, 23 types of playable crabs, 48 different weapons, 1v1, 2 versus 2, offline and online modes. Look, if you ever wanted your red lobster with a side of Cheddar Bay biscuits to go to war, this is the game for you!
<laughs> Kim and I loaded this game up as a joke one night when we were bored. And we ended up laughing ourselves stupid and playing it for far longer than I care to admit. It's impossible to control, stupidly competitive considering the context, but you can do a Kamehameha as a crab. So all in all, 20 bucks well spent. Really, this game should be free or like $5. I don't think to most people it's going to be worth 20 bucks, but I really like it. So, I like dumb things. Not everything has to be serious all the time. Sometimes you just wanna play something stupid. My friggin' thirst gauge is low again. I don't really even know what needs to be said about both Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of Wisps. These games were created by the indie team Moon Studios and somehow ended up being two of the best games the Xbox had to offer. And that's in no way a slight to the Xbox and its lack of exclusives, no! It's just truly a testament to how good both of these games are. With my honest opinion being that these are the best Metroidvania games ever created. And now you can both play and cry along with these games on your Nintendo Switch. That story in Blind Forest still gets me every time. Right at the start and right at the end. Can't help it, but big man baby. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is every bit as good as the first. Now nah, you know what? Screw that. It's better than. It's every bit better than the first. With the developers completely outdoing themselves with all new mechanics and abilities, even going as far as to somehow improve that visuals, the lighting, story, gameplay, and so much more that made the first game so wonderful. This time around, you have, no spoilers please, an adorable little owl friend who you lose immediately at the start of the game and you have to go find him. As you start the game, you quickly notice you can now physically attack using weapons, whereas before, you would have to rely solely on the environment and fancy footwork. Now, you can smash, crash, and shoot your way through the enemies. I wasn't sure how I felt about that at first, but the more I dived into the combat, the more it grew on me and I ended up falling in love with it. There's so many skills and abilities you can find and unlock and it's up to you to find the right balance for your playstyle as some have both positive and negative effects. It has to be true that the developers took note of how players interacted with their original game and listened to any and all of the feedback that might help them improve upon what they created and they tweaked it and they made something that's just... Perfect. It's completely awe-inspiring, and the more I explore and progress through the tunnels, underwater depths, and open areas, the more I can't wait to discover what truly terrifying battle comes next. Is there anything this game can do wrong? Apparently not. Oh boy, we did it! Not only another tan eShop games knocked out of the park, all of which fantastic, debatable on Fight Crab, I'll admit. Maybe nine fantastic ones and then one for fun, but another ten knocked it out the park, and the first video in the new house. Things are happening around here, I tell ya, some cool stuff. <laughs> Alright, I love you guys, thank you so much for watching my videos, remember to like the video if you liked it, and leave down below what eShop game I need to talk about still, but remember, there's like 25 of these videos so do me a favor and watch all 25 and take note before you go down there and tell me I missed Hollow Knight. Didn't miss it! Oh you know what I haven't done in forever? Bring up that little sub button. Man I haven't done this. I haven't done this since I had a haircut for sure. It's gonna be a it's gonna be less of a whip. Bring it up, bring it up, and hair flip on that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. <laughs>